we know of over 300 planets around other stars currently. These planets are generally giant, gas giant planets, very much like Jupiter and Saturn, enormous gas balls. We're interested in planets like that of Earth, rocky planets in, in an orbit where life might be possible. Kepler is designed to find hundreds of Earth-sized planets if such planets are common around stars, dozens of these planets if they're in a habitable zone. And if we find that many, it certainly will mean that life may well be common throughout our galaxy because there's an opportunity for life to have a place uh, to, to evolve. If, on the other hand, we don't find any, that will be another profound discovery. It will mean that Earth must be very rare. We may be the only extant life in our universe. In fact, it'll mean there'll be no Star Trek. We're hoping to find hundreds, of course, although Kepler will not find ET, it's hoping to find ET's home. The answers we get, whether, they, whether we show there are lots of Earth-sized planets or very, very few, will answer, actually answer a question that has been asked by mankind for millennia in fact, since the time of the Greeks. They asked, are there other worlds, or are we alone? So we should get that answer. I've mentioned the habitable zone, and the habitable zone needs to be defined here. And so I'd like to sh start with the first animation. Basically, when we're trying to find these planets, we're measuring orbital periods. So if we have a star and the planet's rotating, orbiting about it in a very short period, that planet's going to be very, very hot. The super-Earth that was discovered earlier this month has an orbital period of about 21 hours and a surface temperature somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 degrees centigrade. If that planet has oceans or lakes, they are oceans and lakes of molten lead, so not very conducive to, to life. On the other hand, if the planet we find has a very long orbital period, it's out a long distance from its star, it's going to be very cold. And in fact, we expect that it would be frozen, forever frozen. And again, we would not expect to see life evolve there either. So what we're interested in finding are planets that are not too hot, not too cold, but just right. We're, finding, we're looking for planets where the temperature is just about right for liquid water on the surface of the planet. That's the area we think might be conducive to life. 